This is Copper 90 and these are the top 10 bizarre celebrations. Balotelli, why always me? Mario Balotelli had a fairly up and down time in England. Before banging in goals for fun in Nice, Balo was either praised for his prowess up front or castigated for his controversial antics. In the Manchester derby in October 2011, Balotelli beautifully combined the two as he celebrated Man City's first goal in their memorable 6-1 demolition of United. After calmly slotting the ball in the net, Mario turned around to face the cameras and lifted his top off to reveal a shirt with the question, why always me? It's a fair question to be honest, particularly since he set fire to his own house after lighting up a bucket full of fireworks. Luis Suarez's dive. When you score in a Merseyside derby against the team whose manager recently accused you of diving, there's really only one thing you can do. Luis Suarez scored plenty of goals for Liverpool, but it's likely that few goals gave him more pleasure than this deflected strike against Everton in 2012. After David Moyes stated earlier that week that Suarez had history with diving and players like him turned fans away from football, Suarez celebrated his goal by running straight over to the Toffees manager and diving right in front of him. Lovely stuff. Emmanuel Adebayor's mad run against Arsenal. The Arsenal hatred of ex-Gooner Emmanuel Adebayor exploded spectacularly in September 2009 during a game against his new club Manchester City. After stamping on Robin van Persie's lovely face in his first game against his old club, Adebayor followed it up with a powerful header for City as they romped to a 4-2 win. As soon as the ball crashed into the net, he was on his bike. Adebayor showed an unrecognisable level of grit and determination to track back with a powerful run, culminating in an epic, cathartic knee slide in front of the travelling Gooners. The away end exploded into chaos and Adebayor triumphantly bathed in the hatred. Eric Cantona's still celebration. Eric Cantona crafted one of the most iconic images in football history on a freezing cold Manchester night in 1996. Already 4-0, Cantona danced past a few players and scooped the ball above and beyond the stranded keeper. The ball kissed the far post and nestled into the net as the stadium burst into rapture. Cantona stood motionless but for a knowing smirk, arms aloft, almost shocked by his own absurd talent as he offered up his latest slice of genius to an adoring public. At that moment, he was simultaneously the total professional and the avant-garde artist. The goal and the celebration that secured his legacy. Pure class. Wayne Rooney's punch KO. Remember that time Stokes Phil Bardsley knocked out Wayne Rooney in his kitchen? The general public had their medical expert hats on, speculating about lasting brain damage and the like. Fortunately, R. Wayne was absolutely fine and proved it by dancing through the Spurs defence and slotting home United's third goal of the day on a lovely Sunday afternoon in March 2015. He dashed to the edge of the pitch and showed off his best shadow boxing skills before hitting a deck with a big smile on his face. Rooney's celebration was loaded, a reminder to the Red Tops who hounded him of what he does best, scoring goals and winning football matches. Or he just thought it was well funny. Either or. Maradona on drugs. Possibly. It's fair to say that El Diego was on a downward slide when he turned out for Argentina at the 1994 World Cup. It was only in 1986 that Diego Maradona had dominated the same competition with a series of phenomenal performances. But he still had plenty to give and proved as much when Fernando Redondo teed him up on the edge of the box against Greece. He took two touches before rifling a shot into the top corner to give Argentina a deserved 3-0 lead. Maradona sprinted straight for the touchline camera, alternating between wild punches and outstretched elation before clenching his arms to his sides. His eyes stared directly at the viewer. Wide, intense, possessed. Viewers obsessed over the celebration, seeing it as the culmination of a legend's fall from grace and trouble with legal and not so legal drugs. His off the pitch antics would fascinate us for years to come, but this moment of raw emotion marked the end of an era. Craig Bellamy's golf celebration. Craig Bellamy once smacked John Arnorisa really hard on the bum with an eight iron golf club in a hotel room in Portugal. All because John didn't fancy having a sing song and Craig wouldn't take no for an answer. So far, so Craig Bellamy. Liverpool had been on a warm weather training mission to the Algarve ahead of their tie against Barcelona and decided to prepare by smashing up the hotel lobby, as you do. Dudek ended up having a night in the cells for good measure. Whilst Bellamy later described his golf based assault of Risa as pathetic, that didn't stop him celebrating with a perfect golf swing after Valdez let his header squirm over the line at the new Camp. Extra points here for Gerard looking on with a cheeky little smile. 
Tamur kept Bayer volleying the hoardings. It's never nice to be left out of the starting lineup, especially if you think you're playing well. Tamuri Ketsbaya, loved by the Newcastle fans and nicknamed the Georgian Geordie, was particularly miffed during a Premier League game against Bolton in 1998. Ketsbaya came on off the bench for the Magpies, notched the winner and then proceeded, like a pale, bald bull, to volley the advertising boards to annihilation. Ketsbaya was a cult hero for the Newcastle fans and his right boot was a fearsome tool, but Tamuri is probably most remembered in England for his unblinkered battering of inanimate objects rather than his bulging of nets. Gaza and the dentist chair. Only Terry Venables of recent England managers would sanction a pre-tournament booze up in Hong Kong, and the players responded in classic 90s fashion, getting absolutely leathered by having spirits poured down their throat in a dentist's chair. Gaza, Robbie Fowler, Steve McManaman, and Teddy Sheringham were pictured in the tabloids, tops off, red-faced and staggering. Outrage was high, but after Venables deflected blame from the players, they went on to thrill the nation, the centrepiece of a month-long party. Gaza's goal against Scotland is maybe the greatest ever scored in an England shirt, but there is no doubt that his celebration, a recreation of the dentist chair with Lucasaid instead of vodka, is the best ever seen at Wembley. Robbie Fowler eating grass. Robbie Fowler was nicknamed God by the Liverpool fans, and gods do big things. Gods influence things. Gods score a shipload of goals. God was part of the media coined group of lads, the Spice Boys, that played for Liverpool in the mid-90s and had been heckled by the Evertonian fans for years regarding unfounded rumours of taking illicit substances. Gods seek retribution. During a Merseyside derby in 1999, Fowler notched a penalty and in front of 44,000 Scousers, celebrated by dropping down on two knees, putting a finger to his nostril and proceeding to snort the white line of the penalty area. Liverpool manager Gerard Houllier afterwards assured that God was pretending to eat grass. But gods don't pretend, Gerard. Gods score goals. That was Copper 90's top 10 bizarre celebrations. Did we miss any? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.